All right, here we are back with another first two baits. Now we're talking about the shad spawn. Now this is in the springtime when pretty much coincides with the bass spawning and it continues until the, the bass are done spawning. So that's why a lot of bass, when they are done spawning, they hang out, the big ones, they'll hang out in the, in the shallows for another few weeks after they're done spawning. A lot of that is coincidental, not coincidental, because of the shad spawn. Those fish are just sitting up there waiting for those shad and alewives and so forth to get up there and spawn at night. A lot of them are still around the uh, bank in the morning. So the two baits that you want to you definitely start with, my number one choice for the shad spawn, far and away, for a couple reasons, is... That's right, a spinner bait. That's just, this is one of my favorites. This is just a, uh, a one that a buddy of mine makes. Um, you know, I like having two willow blades most of the time. Any kind of shad looking color is good. A little bit of flash is good. A little chartreuse in it is also good. I've got a Shockwave 3.5 on the back and it, that trailer hook, a trailer hook is very, very key during the shad spawn, you really, really want to make sure you have that that trailer hook. I've caught a ton of fish during that shad spawn on a spinner bait. Spinner bait is is really key number one for me because it is a great indicator to see whether that shad spawn is going on in the area you're fishing. If you roll up to that bank first thing in the morning, you roll up to the bank whether it's riprap or grass or what have you, you roll up there and you throw that spinner bait and you get that trail of shad following it then you know it is on. It's going down and you better be looking around, you better be moving around, you better be covering a lot of water and uh, using that spinnerbait. And th those shad will trail that spinnerbait all the way to the boat. So as you're reeling that spinnerbait in, make sure that you keep your eye on it and make sure you look for those shad. If you make eight or 10 casts and you don't have any shad following your spinnerbait, you're probably not getting bit either. And you wanna either just start putting it in faster and, and covering more water or bounce to another area real quick and see if you can get that that trail of uh, shad coming behind your spinnerbait. So number one is a spinnerbait, three eighths. A lot of times that's my number one choice because you can keep the bait real high in the water column. There's really no need to get the bait down very deep in the water column. I prefer a little bit of, um, a little bit of color in the water for the spinnerbait, but it doesn't have to be uh, even pretty clear water. You can catch them first thing in the morning on that shad spawn with the spinner bait. Uh, half ounce is good too. So I probably like 60% of the time, three eighths, 40% of the time, half, just kind of depending on how, how fast I'm, I'm fishing it and kind of like the depth of the bank. If it's real flat and real shallow, I'm going three eighths. If it's got a little, you know, a little steeper banks, I'm throwing, covering a little bit water faster. I'll probably go with the half ounce. So that's far and away. Number one is the spinnerbait. Number two, we're gonna have a couple honorable mentions here, but number two, without a doubt, is a swim jig. Now, early on, I didn't understand the power during the shad spawn of a swim jig. Now, this is uh, the Ike's mini swim jig, perfect little combo. I really like a trailer that kicks this way, like the, like the little mini D-chunk does. Um, I like that kick because it helps keep the bait level and it keeps it higher in the water column. So you can, uh, and, and that, that body, that flat body, whatever you're putting on there, you want to make sure it has that good flat body on it so you can skip it. And the power of that, that mini swim jig is because uh, shad spawn happens real well around marinas. Marina docks, big marina docks, you can, in open boat slips, you can throw this easy. But if there's a boat or a pontoon or something in those boat slips, you've only got a little teeny window to get that bait up in there. You can take that little mini swim jig and skip it from here to next week in those little slits. Maybe you hit the boat occasionally. Don't worry about it. Get it up in there and catch that fish because those fish are rarely seeing a bait you might be fishing right behind guys a lot of times shad spawn you're fishing right behind other anglers because they are you know it's going down in certain areas putting your bait into areas where other anglers are not is a big key swim jig is a great way to do that and if you've got 
bank grass, like that willow grass, all the Coosa River lakes, by all means, you better be throwing that swim jig around that grass, hitting that grass, banging it, something about banging into that grass with that swim jig, and it, it triggers those fish, especially during the uh, shad spawn. Uh, so if you've got any of that bank grass, a swim jig might be even better than the, the um, spinner bait and around marina docks or just regular docks. You can skip that bad boy way up under there to where you can't get that spinner bait. On open banks, I'm probably going spinner bait. Uh, so that's kind of my one-two punch. Those are absolutely my first two baits during the shad spawn. And I had a couple honorable mentions. I know people are going to comment on there, dude, I throw nothing but buzz bait. Yeah, buzz bait. Mm -hmm. Buzz bait would probably be an honorable mention. Swim bait, whatever you throw, Kai Tech, swim, any kind of swim bait with a jig head like this can be a good alternative. Uh, even the ones with the, the little uh, underspins on there can be a good alternative as well. But those ones, you need to make sure you fish a light enough weight where you can keep that puppy up in the water column. You don't want it to get down too deep in the water column. I think you'll go right past where the fish are. But probably my number one honorable mention is a Spro popping frog in a shad color and if you want to get a big in like if you want to go for them big ones uh check out this the big the six this is the 70 this is the popping frog 70 it's got that five all gamagatsu frog hook in there i am a big fan of this thing it walks like a champ just like that uh, the 60 the regular 60 popping frog i throw that a ton probably more than Anything I've caught just a massive amount of fish. If you're fishing that willow grass and you want to, you know, really give them something to, like, you want to pop it real hard and then just kind of leave it there for a bit, that that popping frog, the regular popping frog's hard to beat. If you want to walk it uh, a little bit more, cause a little bit more disturbance, you can go to that big 70. Um, but those are, that's definitely honorable mention. I would be remiss if I didn't talk about those baits or they, especially the frog, during the shad spawn, I've caught a pile of fish on them. They definitely get get those big ones as well, uh, especially if you've got that, that willow grass or even a grass line. If, if you know, the lake you're fishing already has some milfoil or hydrilla that's coming to the surface or close to the surface, uh, frog is real good. Buzz bait can be, be pretty good around that shad spawn as well. Um, you know, whopper plopper can be decent, especially towards the end. It can be real good actually towards the end of the shad spawn beginning of the shad spawn probably not as much uh, in my opinion dude so number one and two spinner bait and uh, and the swim jig hard to beat the shad colors and uh man i've just i've had some a lot of fun fun mornings you know i'm talking limits in like 15 minutes i mean like like that as fast as you can throw it out there you're catching fish because uh they're just up there and they're gorging they're feeding it is the shad spawn is one of my most favorite bites through the whole year. It's really fast. It's really action packed. It's really intense. If you get lucky and you get you a little uh, light, misty rain, then it might last for an hour or so, and you can really uh, wreck them during that that hour. But if not, regular mornings, that first 20, 30 minutes of light, whew, tie a good knot, buddy. Have a good time, and uh, make sure that you're using one of those two baits when you go out there and do it. Those are the first two baits. If you have any others or anything you want to add to it, please drop it down there in the comments. If you've not done so already, please subscribe or follow whatever you want to do to my uh, my page, and I'll give you more information like this, and I will interact with you. If you've got any other questions, be sure to uh, hit me up in there as well. I appreciate you watching. Thanks.